Hey, what's up guys? If you're looking to be a specialty welder, this is the video for you today. Right here is my bag that I used for the last seven years to travel and weld across the country. And what I'm gonna share with you today is what I keep in this bag to go make welds in the field. Now, this is not all the tools that I would take to a job. Of course, I would have my job box. This bag would hold all of my specialty tools that I would need as a specialty welder to go make welds in the field, whether at a boiler, whether at a refinery, or some kind of a plant or facility. These are the tools that I would take to go make a field weld. So we're gonna go over these today. And again, some of these tools are provided by the company. Some of these tools I have bought myself. So let's dig in. So the first thing is obviously your welding hood. Um, any welding hood will work. Now more specifically pertaining to the welding hood, I use a completely dark welding lens. I do not use an auto darkening welding lens because whenever you are making certain welds or looking through the bevel or um, you can't entirely see the weld, those auto darkening lenses are going to flash on you. Now if you're out in the open, awesome. I love an auto darkening welding lens, but if you're making field welds, up in the rack, in the boiler, in the heater, in a tight space, these straight dark welding lenses are gonna be great. And the one that I use is off Amazon. It's just a $9 welding lens, it's the glass gold lens, shade 11. So that's my welding hood and that's what I use. Next in the tool bag that I would take up in the rack is going to be a grinder. Now the companies provide these. More specifically, I usually carry a quarter inch um, grinding wheel one-eighth grinding wheel, and then this 16th grinding wheel or 332nd grinding wheel. Um, obviously, you're gonna have to have a grinder making those welds in the field or in the rack or wherever you may be. So obviously, you have to have a grinder. All right, next is going to be a mirror. Now, this mirror is from the pentacletools.com, and um, I have a bigger mirror here, which is like a four by four, and this one is a two, uh, two by 1.25, something like that. So if you, are a welder in today's industry and you wanna be able to make any weld out there, you gotta be able to have two skills. The first one being able to mirror weld and the second one being able to look through the bevel to put a root in. So if you have a mirror, you can make any weld and if you also have that other skill set. So I always have these mirrors with me. Now I don't keep these mirrors in this bag. I keep them in my job box with foam safe. Now if I do have to carry this mirror set up into the rack, then I'll put some foam around this glass and tape it up. So a mirror is the next thing that I always have on every field weld. The next thing is going to be a purge diffuser. Um, this is from Tentacle Tools as well. It's the Sugar Daddy. And whenever you're making those welds in the rack, you have to purge them if they're an alloy. And so a lot of times guys will just cut the end of the hose off and put something on it like a water bottle and put some rags in it and then stick it in the pipe. I always like to have the sugar daddy because it gives me a consistent even purge throughout the weld. So I always have this on me. Next is going to be my heavy hitter TIG rig. I love this. It's a two piece. Um, it's the two piece 150, but I can weld it 350 amps or I can weld it 150 amps with this thing. So again, you got to have you a TIG rig that can do it all because sometimes you might have to go up in the rack and make a smaller weld, which doesn't require heat. And then you also may have to go in the same day and make a J bevel nine chrome weld. And you don't want to have to be switching your rigs and going to the job box and getting your bigger rig or going back and getting your smaller TIG rig. Just one rig to do it all. And that's why I like this two piece 150 rig from Heavy Hitters. Again, the argon and the power are separate. So it keeps your TIG torch cool, allowing you to weld hotter for longer. So TIG torch is my next item. After that, I'm going to have a bandana. Um, even though I'll wake up every morning and put a bandana around my neck, I always have a spare bandana in my bag. You never know if you're going to cut yourself and you need to tourniquet something or um, sometimes, you know, you need to wipe something off of you or you get something in your eyes or whatever. But I always have a rag in my bag. So bandana, rag, whatever it may be. Next thing is going to be my gloves. Um, I usually keep these around my hip on my glove clip. So that's a simple one right there. Glasses, obviously. Also, also, I always put another pair of glasses in my bag as well. So two pairs of glasses, because sometimes these can get pretty jammed up and you could lose them or set them down or whatever. Sometimes you may have to have a small box hood and take your glasses off, set them somewhere and they'll fall. Always keep two pair in my bag. The next item is going to be a purge Y. So this allows me to run three different separate argon hoses off of one um, connector right here. So I'll plug this into the initial argon hose 
and then I have three different ways that argon can be dispersed. Now, here's the thing. Different companies have different connectors for their argon. Some companies have these longer style fittings, and then some companies still use the traditional brass, and you carry two crescent wrenches everywhere, which I don't like. Um, and then also some companies have a smaller you know, connector right here. So again, depending on the company, depends on your setup, but again, you always need one of these Ys. You can get them at Walmart, you can go get them at a parts store. They got them everywhere, you just have to have the right connectors, and most job sites have all this for you. So it's just a lot easier to build one on the job site and then you know take it with you on the next job and just keep it. So next thing is a brush. You never know what you're gonna have to brush on the weld if you need to get some mud off of you or you gotta clean that weld. Um, now, if you're welding alloys, you know, like stainless or inconel or chrome, um, you want to keep a separate brush for alloys, or honestly, sometimes I'll get a brand new brush on a new weld. So obviously you don't want to brush your boot and then brush a weld like I just said, but again, it's never bad to have a brush in your bag that you carry with you on the job. Now, while we're on the subject of brushes, I do have a small little miniature brush that I use. So whenever I finish making a weld and whenever I file it or grind it, then I'll just brush up all the way around it to make it look really good for those QCs because if you can become friends with the QC or if you can show them that your welds are problem free uh, visually, then the QCs will love you. So that's the best thing you can do is just make sure whenever you finish a weld, make it look like the best weld on the job because your life is gonna be so much easier if the QC is on your side and they're willing to go to war for you if something happens like you know, you're, you're making a weld and you can't get a purge and you're fighting it. If you're buddies with the QCs, you can make a lot of your problems go away. Now, I'm not saying they can help you make a weld shoot x-ray, but they're gonna help you to know what to do and how to get you know, on the green of fighting a hard weld. So the next thing is brushes. Always have at least something with you to brush a weld with. Also, the next thing is going to be a gauge. Now, this is a tool that I sometimes keep in my bag and I sometimes don't, but generally speaking, I'm always gonna grab this and put it in my bag when I go to make a weld after leaving my job box because you never know if there's gonna be an argon gauge over at the tanks by the weld that you're making. So usually the night before, you know, or the day of the last shift will get your argon bottles where you need to make a weld or they may not. Still, you don't know if there's gonna be a gauge attached to that bottle. So I always just carry my own gauge. And again, different fittings for different job sites. So I can easily pop this one off use this one or connect this one in and be fine. Doesn't matter the job site or company, I'm always ready to go. So get you a good oxygen gauge or something that can push a lot of argon because you may have to run three different people off of this and one of those little flow meters is not gonna work. So get you a good little gauge here like this, our oxygen gauge, it works just fine. Next thing is gonna be a light. You need a very good light. Now, obviously you have your pen light attached to your neck. A lot of specialty welders have that, but I always had one of these lights. So this light can rotate and twist. Also, it can rotate and twist like this. So I can put it wherever I want. I can twist the light here change the density of it, and also it has a magnet here and a magnet here. So I can put this anywhere and it will give me light wherever I'm working. Cause sometimes as a specialty welder, you'll get up in a spot and there's no light there. And it would be a real hassle to go get some kind of a light from the tool room. So if you get you a good little light like this, then it can light up your whole work area and it makes your life so much easier. And this right here is a coast light that I got from Lowe's. So yeah, get you a good light that that is gonna be like a work light, not your little pen light. All right, then also I got some pliers, um, crescent wrench, and okay, also I'm gonna group these next three tools together because they're pretty much in the same family of tool. Um, I got my channel locks here, and these kind of open up to as big as you want. Okay, so for literally anything on the job site. Um, and then also, the pliers here to cut wire, to twist things, to move them, similar, but they also have different purposes. And then my channel lock. You always gotta have at least one set of channel locks in your bag, break those um, gauges loose or tighten up anything on the job site. So these three tools are what I always carry in my bag when I walk around. And honestly, if I could only have two, I would drop this one and just do this right here, okay? So get you a channel lock get you a crescent wrench. Next on the list is going to be a file or a saw blade. So I usually carry one of these two type of saw blades with me on a job site. So this is a German saw blade. Um, it's a lot bigger 
in actuality, but I cut it in half and use it as like a file slash saw blade, or I have one of these smaller ones. What these saw blades do is allow you to go through the bevel whenever you're making a weld and fix anything on the inside. So let's say you mess up a weld on your root, you have to cut into it and there's metal shavings just spurred out all over the inside. These saw blades will allow you to look through the bevel and dig out all of those metal shavings. So you can either have a big one like this or a small one. Now, on this one, I have sharpened the end of it so I can kind of cut some of that out as well. So dig it out with the, the burrs here and then kind of cut it with this end. So either one works, but I don't carry a file because these do the same thing as a file, but also go through the bevel. So get you a file or a saw blade. Next on the list is gonna be a flathead screwdriver. A lot of the times whenever you're on a job site and you have to use an end grinder or like a small little wire wheel grinder. Um, to take those blades off, you have to have a flathead screwdriver. And it sucks whenever you have to go to a job site and try to find one. So I just keep my own little one that I got from Harbor Freight or wherever. You can find them on any street or road or ditch or corner. But a flathead screwdriver. Now a knife works as well. Um, the only problem with a knife is you can't it's not flat right here. Now it works sometimes whenever like the screw is protruding out from something, but this flathead's gonna allow you to get in there and make it happen. But you can do it with this, a knife, um, but just keep your knife on you. I don't put the knife in the bag. So yeah, get you a flathead screwdriver to work on those grinders that the placement part is a flathead. And next out of my bag is going to be some electrical tape. Um, you wouldn't think that you would use electrical tape a lot on a job site, but I use it all the time to tie up my leads um, or if I need to fix a hose, or if I get a cut on my finger, I need to cover it up or just tape it up, I always have electrical tape. Also too, we're in the welding industry, so if your TIG rig breaks or you get a welding lead that's all gummed up and scuffed, then you can just put electrical tape over it to get it by until you fix it. So get you some electrical tape, throw it in your bag. The next thing out of the bag is going to be this remote. So whenever you're up in the field making welds, you don't wanna to have to always run back to your welding machine to change the temperature or even yell down at your helper or fitter or whoever to change your temperature. I like to be in control of my temperature without going through anybody. So I always have my remote hooked to a cable that goes to the weld machine and right in, you know, wherever I'm making the weld, I can adjust my temperature right there. So get your remote, it's probably, now it's like, you know, farther down on the list of tools, but it's probably one of the top three tools to have if you're making field welds, because um, you can adjust everything within an instant. Because whenever you're making a weld and you're in a tight spot and you really need to finish the weld, going down to change the temperature, asking somebody just is such a hassle. So it's easier to not deal with anybody and get in the zone, stay in the hooch, mess with your temperature by yourself. So get your remote. Next is going to be a ground clamp. Now, why I say a ground clamp to keep in your bag at all times is because it seems like on every single job site, somebody's stealing a ground clamp or they don't show up or they don't stay on the machine. And then you're always looking for a ground clamp, going around the job site, asking everybody if they have a ground clamp and you don't wanna be the welder that doesn't have their own ground clamp. So I always keep a ground clamp in my bag and I'm actually currently working on this one because someone stole my last ground clamp. So don't steal someone else's ground clamp, please, because it makes everybody's life harder. Just build your own. So <laughs> I guess you could take one from somebody else and build your own, but don't do that because then it's just a never ending cycle of welders just taking other welders stuff. So um, this one was from a tool room or you can, I honestly, they're really cheap on Amazon, but this is a small brass ground clamp. And what you do is you want to weld you a Tweco fitting on the end of this. That way it's just this ground clamp that you're taking everywhere and it has the fitting. So you plug it into the lead and then bam, you got a ground wherever you're at. So get you a ground, make sure it's uh, small enough to fit in your bag and it's not too cumbersome and heavy because there are so many different types of grounds out there. So yeah, get you a ground for your bag. Okay, the last couple of items in my bag and they're here on the bottom just rolling around is uh, a tiny little piece of tungsten. I didn't go over this, but a lot of welders carry a tungsten holder in their bag. And whenever you get to a certain skill set or point in your welding career and you're making welds a lot, you really don't gum up your tungsten that much. So I don't carry any tungsten holders with me. I keep my tungsten in my TIG rig and then I have maybe just a little tiny piece if I need it or something. And also the tool rooms have tungsten. So I just keep one of my rigs, sharpen it when I need, stick it back in. Also, I have another uh, 
coupler for the TIG torch if I lose it, and then also a spare collet to stick in my TIG torch as well, okay? So that is it. Those are all the things that I put in my bag whenever I go up into the field. More specifically, I'll have my job box on the job site and this bag will be in the job box and they say, hey, go make a weld over here and then you'll be over there up in the rack making a weld. So then I just grab this bag, go make the welds. For those of you wondering, this is an old school Klein bag. You can still get it on their website or Amazon. I just got it on there just because um, I don't like the buckets and I don't like the pack outs. This just works really good because it carries everything efficiently and as small as possible. And also these bags last a long time. And then this strap right here was made from a crane operator. He was making them. So on the job site, tons of riggers make stuff out of rope um, with their free time. So cope you one of these on your next job site. And yeah, that's all I use to make specialty welds out in the field. Now the misconception is that you need a crap load of tools to make welds. And the reality is you don't. The less tools that you take up into the rack, the less hassle it is. Because when you are in a scaffold that is a you know, four foot by four foot scaffold and your fitter's up there, you're up there and maybe a helper's up there. And then you got a crap load of tools everywhere because they brought their tools, uh, the helper brought his tools and then you brought your tools. So three people on a scaffold, everybody has a ton of tools and it's just clustered. So as the welder, try to carry as little tools as possible um, for each welding job, but make sure you have all the tools for your job. You don't wanna be going back and forth to the tool room. So again, this bag and what I have in it is specific to me and my welding style. You may have the same thing or you may have a couple different tools in there, but it's all specific to what you're doing and how you weld. Those are just the basics. So copy this, comment below one tool that you carry in your bag with you on welding jobs and we'll catch you on the next one.